Well, as I said, I'm not preaching today. I didn't know if I was going to be here on time. So I've asked Mickey to fill in. We've been going through a series called More Than Conquerors. And we've done three weeks up to now. We did number week one on fear, how to uh, have victory over fear. We looked at victory o- over um, doubt. Then last week we had victory over discouragement. Uh, I'm not, I don't know idea what Mickey's preaching on today, but I know God's going to bless him and bless us. So as Mickey comes this morning, let's give him a warm welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. And then there's one or two people that said so. It said it's a blessing Amen. to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Yeah. Come on. Get excited for the things of God. You know, it says the Spirit of God draws all men unto Him. You're here this morning, and it's not a coincidence that you're here. I want to tell you that God loves you unconditionally. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, before I, and I was just watching um, as. Um, as the basket was there, people were just rushing up to to give to the kingdom of God. And many know it's it's more blessed to, to give than receive. And it's such an honour to be able to uh, you know, I we were in the prayer meeting before and we were praying about you know, Ukraine and Irene and gosh I tell you one thing, the things that God is doing is just awesome and you know I have a tremendous message this morning and I just tell you that if you open up your heart and your spirit and, and let God touch you. God's going to touch you. A man who's here wants to receive from God this morning. Come on. Come on. I'm preaching this message to myself this morning. Believe me. I'll tell you one thing. This is awesome. What we're part of in God's kingdom is awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. Not by might, not by power, but my spirit, says the Lord. And if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to open up this morning and just be receptive to what God wants to tell you. And I'm going to Lord shout this morning from Mark 4, 35 to 41. Shout amen when you have that. Or you have it on your Kindles or your, or your, or your Bibles. And you have it there. It's Mark 4, 35 to verse 41. Okay, I'll give you a minute to, to get that. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready, Joseph? No. I'll give you a minute. I, I like to take my time. You know I don't like to rush things. It says, in the same day when the evening was come, he said unto, him, unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when he sent away the multitude, he took him over, and he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm. And the wind and the waves beat on the ship, that it was full. And he was in the hinder part, asleep on the pillar. <laughs> Here's Jesus, right, in the midst of a storm, and he's asleep on the pillar. Right? Now, how many has ever been a storm in their life? Yes. Come on, am I the only one? No. no. Come on, let's get real this morning. Pastor Bill and I were in a storm years ago. Do you remember that, Pastor Bill? Mm-hmm. And the next thing that took place, this was, all this ship was going up and down. We were going to Holland. Man, it was scary. It was scary. And here's, here's Jesus, right? And he's fast asleep. And he said, and, and and the next thing they said, they wakened him and they said unto him, Master, care is now that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto them, Peace be still. Wow! He says to them, Peace be still. Right? And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared it, saying, They said one to another, What manner of this, even that the winds obey him? Wow! I want to tell you, folks, that there's no trial or no storm or situation in your life that God hasn't got the answer. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll say that again. There's nothing in your life, if you seek God, that you will find the answer in the peace of God. Isaiah 26 3 says, He will keep us on perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on Him. Amen. Amen. Come on, folks, let's get real this morning. You know something, it says in Ecclesiastes, right? Weeping may endure for a night, 
But joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. You want for many only one that ever came to a, a, a situation or a trial in your life. Come on, folks. I've come to preach a message to you. And you're wondering, how, how am I going to get out of this one? <laughs> God, you can handle this one. Well, let me just tell you something, folks. The lights don't go on in heaven because you and I struggle and go through trials and situations. Believe me, he's got all the answers, right? And in verse 25, it says, let us pass over to the, other, to the other side. Now, don't forget, Jesus had been teaching the disciples all day long, right? Yeah. He had been pouring faith into them, right? And now he gave them a command. He says, let's go and pass over to the other side. And that's what he does for us sometimes. He says, let's go and do what we're going to do and just obey what I'm telling you to do. Do you realize what he was doing? Do you understand what Jesus was doing? Yeah. Right? He had just been talking about the power of the Lord all day long with them. He gave disciples a seed and he gave them the word. He gave them the commandment to pass over the other side. And believe me, they were scared. They were panicked. Have you ever had panic and chaos in your life? Let's be honest this morning. Let's just be honest before God because I find in every time in my life that I'm honest before God and you know, this pride and this ego is a horrible thing. <laughs> and you know, sometimes God will just touch you, right? He gave him the power. He gave his disciples a seed and he gave him the word and he wanted them to act upon it. He wanted them to do, right, what he had done. He wanted them to exercise their faith and rebuke the storms and do what he called them to do and the same thing he wants to do for you and I in our lives. He had, he, so he gave the disciples the seed, he gave them the word. And you know, I find this powerful. He said, he didn't tell the disciples, let us go into the boat, go half and then drown. Let's get in there and overwhelm the storm. We're never going to make it to the other side. He didn't tell them that. He didn't say that to them at all. He told them to go over to the other side. Do you know the first scripture that I ever learned off my heart was Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Does anybody know what it says? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and you know you don't understand it. Come on, Wendy. In all your ways acknowledge him and he And that's so true. Hallelujah. May I tell you something? Sometimes you just got to get out of the way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I tell you something. I keep, I fell flat in my face loads of times. And I've been honest. I'm sure you have as well. <laughs> but the thing about it is when you say to God, listen, I need you. I need you to help me. Like God, he always seems to carry the song. And you know, it's no coincidence that I'm preaching this message. And it's no coincidence that you're sitting here this morning listening to this. Now listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Right? And let it penetrate deep into you and your faith will be activated. You see, he didn't cause the storm. And he doesn't cause the storms in our life. And, so, and for us to say to God, this is wrong, this has happened. We, we blame him sometimes. We blame him sometimes. We say to God, this is your fault. You've done this. I mean, you've never done it. Let's be honest this morning. My God, why how did you get into this mess? He doesn't call storms in life, but he gives us the answer how to deal with them. So for us to say, God, why is this happening? It's wrong. We're, we're, in the first place, we're imputing an iniquity and error to God, and we need to stop it. Stop blaming God. It's not his fault. You know, it's not his fault that we go through storms and trials and heartache, pain, agony. Come on, have you ever been there? But the thing is that we've got the answer. You know, I've been serving God 40 years next year. 1983, I got saved, me and Bridie. And I wouldn't be here only for Denise and Billy. Oh, Jesus. 
No, I'm just saying the true Jesus, and, and this is true respect because he, he, they, they stood to us and they said, you know, you and Buddy want to get saved, give your hearts to the Lord. I tell you, I've been through loads of things in my life, but it's closer. You know, we have a habit of running away from God. You ever been there? Come on, let's get real. But they say that God wants us to run to him, not away from him. Because the word of God says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteous and some things will be added to us. No, it says all things. Thank you. Shall be added unto us. See, God is a good God. I said God is a good God. I didn't hear you. I said God is a good God. He's an awesome God. <laughs> and if he wasn't that awesome, I wouldn't be serving him. I tell you one thing, some of the situations that we go through, thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he's so powerful, that he has all the answers. Even when we fall flat on our face. <laughs> See the thing is that John 10.10, does anyone know what it says? Go on Denise, the thief coming to steal, kill, steal, kill and destroy. <laughs> Well, I have come to have life and life in all its fullness. I better get a drink of uh, water here instead. And I love this part. The disciples of the board started and said, Lord, wake up. <laughs> Go tell them, don't you care we perish? Get a bucket, bail us out, row, do something, help us. You aren't pulling your weight. If it wasn't for us, We'd have, we'd have sunk. You've done nothing. You haven't done anything. Do you ever do that? <laughs> Panic and think, and blame God, you haven't done a thing. Oh man, this is awesome. Doesn't that sound familiar to what people are saying today? Why haven't you healed me? I've prayed, I've done this, and yet you haven't done your part. Lord, don't you care about me? I'll say that again. Lord, don't you care about me? See, the truth is that Jesus has already done his part. I'll say that again. Jesus has already done his part on the cross of Calvary. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 7 it said, But God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but the world for him what? Do you know something? It's the greatest gift that God can ever do for you and I. Isaiah 53 says he was bruised for iniquities. Man, the pain that he went through for you and I. Do you ever been so stressed out you think, I can't handle this? Come on. Well, be Jesus when he was in the garden sweating blood. He took our stress. He took our strains. He took our fears. And he dealt with them. Do you know why? Because he's awesome. And I love this scripture. Come on, that deserves a clap off from you. Because he's an awesome God. He's an honored God. He has everything under control. And sometimes we and I are so worrying so much and stressed out we can't even sleep at night time. Come on. And it says in Matthew that, yeah, I'm going to take care of the birds. Don't I look after them? How much I'm going to take care of you? Stop worrying about tomorrow. Man, I'm so excited about this message. I forgot what it was. <laughs> John 1 14 says, I was supposed to bring this one up. Oh, yeah. John 1 14. There you are. And the word was, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Man, I tell you something. God is so graceful and so merciful and so kind to you and I that he loves us so, so much. Man, he, he absolutely is awesome. Hallelujah, Jesus. You see, he gave the disciples that word. Then it was up to them to take that word and release life through it and believe it and speak it out. Amen. Say that again. Love us so much, I want to say it again. 
It was up to them to take this word, release life through it, and speak it out. And it's the same for you and I today. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. And this isn't me, folks. You know, this is God. Does anyone know what Proverbs 18.21 says? It says, death and the life are in the power of the tongue. What are you saying to your situation? Come on, folks. This message is real. This word of God is alive. We're supernatural beings and sometimes we just operate in our senses. Come on. Taste, hear, smell. All of them. And we just go into our senses. But we're supernatural beings. We have the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. It's awesome. And believe me, God's doing a work in this place right now. <laughs> God gives us the seeds of his words which will grow any solution to our problems. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. God gave us the seeds of his word which will grow any solution to our problems. Hallelujah. Do you know when a farmer goes and sows a seed? It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And I just want to encourage you folks to let the seed of God's word go penetrate deep into your heart. Amen. And I found this very, very interesting from this passage. Jesus would get up and say to the guys, I'm sorry, I was tired. I was just trying to catch a few wings. It's my fault. I got you into this. I apologize for not getting up and taking care of you. But listen, Instead, the Lord asked, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I want to say that again. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? He wanted them, those disciples to operate by faith Amen. and not by fear. Amen. Amen. And faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. I'll tell you sometimes, I, I, I preach back to myself. I do. I taught this word because it's powerful. It's awesome. Man, the seeds that are, are opportunities that you and I have in this place, they're just so amazing. You see, he was angry at their carnality and disappointed at their own belief. Jesus. And it would have been just for Jesus to be critical of these disciples if there was nothing that they could have done. But they could have done. They could have operated in faith Amen. and rebuked the storms themselves. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I tell you, there's people sitting here right now that are very fearful, are stressed out, and you know God loves you. Amen. We walk by faith. We're supernatural. Do you know something? Lord, give us the eyes of Jesus. <laughs> give us the Shagana glory and the power of the Holy Spirit that we can see in Hebrews, a place full. What's the difference between an optimist and a pessimist? Come on. The optimist, come on. It says the glass is full. The other one says it's half empty. What are you saying? What are you believing for? What are you speaking for? And the thing about this interesting part about this scripture. If these disciples could have understood what Jesus had been teaching them all day long, mm. they could have done something about the storm. Mm. They had the solution. Mm. And so do you and I have the solution. And that's why God is so awesome. Mm. He has the answer to every one of our problems and our situation. Yes. And I tell you something, you know, some of the stuff that comes out that Denise puts up on everybody else and all these lovely ladies are a blessing. Everything is in the Bible that is the greatest book that was ever written. Amen. And I know about us because we're supernatural beings. Every time I read it, I get something new out of it. They could have taken their authority and commanded the boats to go to the other side. 
They could have command, rebuked the wind and commanded the waves to stop. I'll say that again. They could have rebuked the wind and commanded the waves to stop. So can you and I. You ever been troubled? Anxiety? Stressed out? Fearful? Broken hearted? Jesus. Let's get real here. Amen. This is a message from the throne room of heaven. God can heal anything. Amen. He can touch an individual that will surrender his life to them Hallelujah. and bless them. I look around me tonight and see so many blessings in this place. And the thing about you and I sometimes is we forget the blessings that God already has done. Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. We forget the blessings when God has already done, especially when we're going through trials, heartache, tribulations, but he has the answer. We just need to trust him and be patient. Amen. And you know, I do a lot of gardens and stuff, and anyway, the thing is that you can't go into an ice garden. <laughs> and you know, when you go into the garden, there's lovely flowers around the place, and it's hard work. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Just. <laughs> and the thing is that, where was it? <laughs> it's the hard work in the garden. Yeah, it's, it's just, when, you, when you go into the garden, it just you know that people have done the hard work because it, the beauty is there, the flowers are all coming up. And, that garden's out there and the flowers are coming up. And, <laughs> and it looks so nice. He says, Jesus rebuked him saying, guys, you ought to have been doing better than this. And you know, brothers and sisters, he tells us the same thing. We ought to be doing better than this. Amen. We should know better. Amen. Sometimes. We should know better. And this is the mercy of God. He just gives us the faith. And do you know the thing about this gospel that you and I have? It's for sharing. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Many know that. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's something nice about um, being able to share your faith. And I take so much joy in an individual when they're changed by the power of God. And I just get so much pleasure when I see... Like Barbara on the, on, 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 on the Monday night group and Bible studies and Aria and, and the Grain family over there. And man, the stuff they're coming out and I'm just looking back and saying, can I take some of your notes there, you know? And, <laughs> and they bring out some stuff out there and I think, God, and Ken and he's coming out with Christine. And, man, we've got to enjoy the things of God. And Ben. And Ben. I Ben, I will not forget you, sorry. Excuse me, Ben. Thank you, Ben. I and mean, then some of the stuff that we have on there, you know, Christine is teaching and but you know, it is serious stuff. But we you know, it's good stuff. Amen. So like Pastor Bill was was, was saying before, if you're not part of the Bible study, I, I encourage you to get into it. Amen. You're missing out if you know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, because yeah, you see the word of God is a seed that will change your life forever. Really, Jesus. It will. You know, and the thing is that the enemy will find us find loads of things for us to do. But believe me, when you get into the Word of God, I know it's, re it's so refreshing. It changes you all the time. You know that. So you know, God wants us to have fun, but enjoy the things of God. So I would encourage you, perhaps you haven't been getting involved, come out, get involved. Come into the prayer meeting. We do business and don't be afraid. We, we won't embarrass you. We, you know, God, we're all learning. We're all in the, we've all got their plates on us. Am I speaking this to myself or what? <laughs> we've all got L plates up on us. Like I said before, the Lord has poured out His Spirit of mercy on all nations. And I love that scripture. And you know, if you, if you, the Word of God is so powerful, and the Word of God was with flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the begotten Son of Father, full of grace and truth. Oh Lord, it's just so beautiful when He so 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 much mercy. And you know something? He wants us to extend the mercy that God has given us to other people. I'll say that again. He wants us to extend the mercy and the compassion to those that are lost. And folks, this is what it's all about. 
And you know, I love when Denise starts sharing and talking about the community and and people that are hurt and they're, and they're going through different trials and tribulations. And you know, we have the answer. We have the answer, folks. Yeah. And it's found in the Word of God. You know, Jesus yeah. gave us all authority. Mm. All authority yeah. to preach this Word. Yeah. I'll say that again. Mark 16, 15, it says, He said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Where's your world? Your family? Your workplace? Your neighbours? All authority is given unto you. And don't be afraid. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe what I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you till the end. He gave us the authority to deal with oppression. He gave us the authority that people that are, are so hurt and so bruised that we have the answers. And you know sometimes, folks, all people are want is a listening ear. They just want you to listen to them, help them, pray for them, be willing to spend time and how many times has God spent time with you? Amen. Come on, folks. How many times did he spend time? How many times did he still spend time with you and help you? Lord, help us in this place. Help us to be full of compassion for the lost. Because I believe we're on the verge of a powerful outbreak of the things that are going to happen. Let's give the Lord a clap out for you. Get excited. And God uses people like you and I. Wow. Are you willing? Amen. I'm telling you, this place ain't going to be big enough. I'm serious, folks. God didn't give us this building for nothing. I mean, it's hard work. I mean, he takes care of everything. He wants us to reach people. Particularly now that we're getting the opportunities that are going to come along that, you know, that we're able to. God, you know, I, I, I miss those outreach from me in the prayer pines. Do you know, I was praying for a family member, right, for years. I, I, I don't know if Pastor Bill remembers, and I think Christine was there. And you know, I was praying for them, and my mother has died in heaven now. Anyway, we, we, I've been praying for these two big individuals, and the next thing, didn't, did you, do you remember that, Christine? They walked around the corner with the two with the babies in the in the pram. And you know, they came over to me and God, I tried. And the next thing they said to me, What are you doing, Uncle Michael? They said, We're just letting a uh, prayer request for people. Can we go on and, and uh, send a prayer request up for your mom? Oh God, I had to walk away and and the reason why I'm saying this is that maybe you're praying for an individual for so long and oh God can do anything. Amen. Amen. It takes time. He can do it straight away, but he can do it. Yeah. And he seems to have all the answers to every situation in our life. Jesus. He told us to heal the sick. Yeah. He told us to advance his kingdom on the earth. Luke nineteen thirteen, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds, saying unto them, Occupy till I come. Amen. You see, Jesus gave us these words, and the problem is we don't take time to plant the word in our hearts, keep it there, and meditate it. So they can take root and bear fruit Jesus. in our lives. Jesus. You know, 
I want to read a scripture that's awesome. And I love this. It's found in Joshua. Excuse me, sorry. Joshua 1 89. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in day and night, that you may observe to call and written it, and then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Wow. Verse 9 says, I have not a command you to be strong and have good courage. Do not be afraid and dismayed, for the Lord the God is with you wherever you go. I love that scripture. Sorry, excuse me. He is all the answers. It takes work, it takes discipline to walk this world. Amen. And we're asking to do it, but he's already given us the authority to do it for us. He wants us to take this. See, when the Lord comes back in the end times in Revelation 19 15, it says, A sharp two edged sword is held and come out of his mouth and strike the nations. I don't believe that Jesus is describing a physical sword, but the sword represents the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 okay. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing dividing the sun of the soul and the spirit, the giants of the mirror, discerning the thoughts of the heart. Mm. Wow! This Word will reach everything. It will break down the hardness of heart yeah. in an individual. I'm telling you, maybe, you, maybe you're here today and you're wondering, you're, there's no coincidence why you're here. Amen. You're here because God loves you. Amen. I'll say that again. He loves you. The Word of God will be the greatest display of power in the history of the universe, and He's given that to you and I. Wow. What a privilege. Do you know the authority that you have? It's God. <laughs> it's all God. Hallelujah. And you have the same word right now. Use it and watch it work. Hallelujah. Come on, faith. We're talking about exercising our faith. Amen. We don't need a miracle just to fall out of the sky. What we need is to take the word of God and plant the seed in your heart and let it grow. I love this scripture. Amen. I'll say that again. What we need is to take the word of God and plant the seed deep in our heart and watch it grow. Yeah. It's a beautiful scripture that I love and I read it regular. It's in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. Sorry, excuse me. My son, give attention unto my words. Incline your ear to say, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them. In the midst of your heart, for the life of those that find life unto all their flesh. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that absolutely amazing? Amen. Amen. Then the supernatural life and miraculous power of God will come right up in the midst of you and come forward. Out of your belly shall what flow rivers of living water. That awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> and it's so true. Isaiah 26 3 says, I will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed in him. Amen. You see, God's word is like a bridge over troubled waters. I'll say that again. God's word is like a bridge over troubled waters. There's a powerful scripture here that I'm going to bring out before I finish. You know, I'm just going to give time. I want you to listen to this. I love this. It says, My word will not return unto me empty. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do return unto me without watering, the earth make it in bud and flourish. So that he use seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. I will not return and be empty, but accomplish all that is there and accomplish the purpose of the sent. Can we just bow our heads right now before God? Do you know, do 
Jesus is in this place right now. And he draws everybody onto them. And, and it would be, I want to give you an opportunity right now. You're in this place right now, and, and I'm not going to embarrass you. Perhaps you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That means born again. Ask him to receive as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. If you want Jesus to be your Lord in your life, I'm going to ask you to slip up your hand. I'm going to give you this opportunity. And I won't embarrass you. I won't embarrass you. All you to do is want to pray for you. I want to give you the opportunity right now to receive. It will be unfair for me and anyone else. This is how we all got saved. I want to give you the opportunity. Maybe you're embarrassed to do this in front of everybody. You come and see me later on and come and see one of our pastors or somebody sitting down there and we will teach you how to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go welcome Pastor Bill back up as he closes the service. Thank you, Pastor Bill. people out so I, I, I'm going to need 15 or 20 minutes at the end Joseph, Ken, Anthony you can come you don't have to lift nothing because I know and uh, anybody else who make it and uh, we're going to show you how to use the lift we know if someone gets stuck and uh, or if there's a fire we've got fire chairs at both stairs so you know we have been trained on it but we just because of lockdown and everything, we've not, we need refreshing. But just before uh, we finish, there's a scripture that I, I was thinking about, and I'm going to read it and then. I'm reading it in Ephesians 4 7. It says, But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Okay. Now, hold on to that word gift. And he says, therefore he says, when he, Jesus, ascended in on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts Amen. to men. And then in verse 11, it says, and he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, I just want um, Wendy and Joseph to come forward. I want Mickey and I want um, Ken. And just come up, just outline here. I'm not going to keep you long because these are gifts to our church. Amen. These are the leadership of the church. And Christine, come on. Anybody who's in, in the... I need to fill in the background as She's probably not finished yet, but I'm sure Anne can stand in for her. And, you know, gifts to the church. And myself and Denise as pastors. And I was looking at this. Um, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers as gifts to the church. And we shouldn't turn our nose up at these gifts. Amen. We shouldn't belittle them. These are God-given. Doesn't matter what your indoctrination is, that's what the Word of God says. Amen. And I want to pray for these for fresh anointing because how many know we're coming out of that 18 months or so of darkness 
with this COVID. And, you know, for 18 months we wasn't in the building. And we're just barely getting back now. And I want us to reboot. Yeah. Amen. We're not starting again. We're rebooting yes. what we had before. We're rebooting it. Have you ever rebooted your laptop? <laughs> God wants us to reboot it now. We're going to reboot ministry. We're going to reboot dedication. We're going to reboot authority. We're going to reboot whatever it takes for God to work in our lives in this congregation. So if you're a believer in prayer, why don't you outstretch your hands? I'm going to ask Denise to come and help me pray. And we're just going to pray for our leaders today. For a fresh anointing. So why don't you outstretch your hands if you've got baptizing the Holy Spirit, just begin to pray. Hallelujah. Let's just pray for them, Denise. Just make it quick. Hallelujah. Father God, right now, I pray for Wendy and Joseph right now, oh God, that you'll reboot it for them, Lord, this, this year. Lord, that everything that they've done, Lord, in your name, Lord, will be rebooted. Lord, as they lay their plans before your throne of grace right now, Lord, I pray from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. Lord, that you'll baptize them afresh in the Holy Spirit. Lord, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Lord, with the healing hands, oh God, and the word of faith. In Jesus' name, I pray right now. Hallelujah. I pray for Mick right now, oh God, as he continues, Lord, in your word. I pray, Lord, that you'll remove every stumbling block in Jesus' name right now. Reboot him, oh God, this year, Lord. Let's, Lord, see a fresh anointing from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Oh, for his family right now, oh God. Lord, move in anointing, oh God. Move in the miraculous, move in the divine power of the Holy Spirit, oh God. I pray for Ken right now, oh God. I pray for strength. I pray for a fresh anointing. I pray, Lord, as he leads them studies that you'll reboot him, oh God. Lord, that nothing lacking, oh God, in the Holy Ghost from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, that you'll do a supernatural work continuing in Ken's life and in his body right now. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. I pray for Anne right now, oh God. I pray, oh God, that as Lordship, with Irene and Lisa house group, Lord, that you'll bless yes. them and anoint them. Lord, bring revival, oh God. Mom. A fresh anointing from the top of the head to the soles of the feet right now, oh God. I pray for her husband, Len, right now, oh God. Bring him in, oh God. Touch him, Jesus, oh God. Break him down, Lord, in the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, for salvation right now. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray for Christine right now as she joins in the leadership in these groups. Lord, in her, in, her, in her community groups. I pray for the daughters. I pray, oh God, right now for a rebooting of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah, oh God. Lord, that you'll set the daughters free to serve you, oh Amen. God. I pray for Christine's leadership in the home right now, Lord. Continue blessing. Bring fruit, oh God, in her feet she puts her hand to and reboot it for this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Don't go away yet. Hallelujah. Um, I've got five more minutes. I know I have. Because the Holy Ghost told me. Hallelujah. While they're anointed, while they're rebooted, while they're fresh. Anyone sick amongst us? Come forward. We're going to pray for you. Wow, healthy congregation. Come on. Don't be shy. Come on. You set that side then, Ken. Hallelujah. Okay, um, come forward, get in the line there. You can face this way. Go over there, Auntie, please. Sorry, I'm sorry to point you. Okay, I'm going to ask the, the guys here, every one of them, to come and pray for you. You don't have to say anything, just let them pray for healing powers right now. Go ahead, Anna and Christine. Go and pray for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank
Stay up here, Dan, because I want you to represent your husband's birthday coming up on Tuesday, is it? Hallelujah. 10th of May. Yes. And yours is today. Oh, no. Hallelujah. So we got a bit early last week. So anyway, so we're going to sing happy birthday to uh, Anthony and Len, who's Anthony. <laughs>